Today we're tackling every griller's nightmare, which is my own personal experience here where I've got a beautiful bone-in tomahawk ribeye and I am down to just a few crumbs left of charcoal. So how are we gonna cook this steak? Hey, I'm James from Smoking Dad Barbecue, and you join me at a bit of a crisis in progress. Well, not really so much a crisis. Been, since tomorrow, I'm scheduled to receive a whole bunch more charcoal, and this problem will go away. But today, of all days, is my birthday, and I just happened to get this gorgeous tomahawk ribeye as a birthday present. I really want to enjoy it. So I narrowed it down to two options on what I can do when I'm all out of charcoal. So one idea is I could just take a couple of these wood chunks. These are peach and oak. I use those two most common. I have lots of those. And we could turn our Kamado Joe into a wood fired oven. That's something that I've seen a few channels do. I've never tried cooking exclusively with wood, but once we get it burning hot, we don't need to worry about any creosote and that should work just fine. And the other idea is something that a few of you have left in comments before, which is, James, can we run our Kamado Joe with gas as fire? And so we are going to turn our Kamado Joe into a gas fire. Ooh. Excuse me. We're gonna turn our Kamado Joe back into a propane. Ooh. So all kidding aside, even though the idea of turning a premium ceramic Kamado into a gasser does turn my stomach a little bit inside, the more I think about it, I'm starting to wonder, is the reason that I left my gasser for dead over a decade ago and have been cooking exclusively with live fire the fault of the fuel source? Or is it more a design of the gasser? And so what I mean there is you tend to get a drying effect with your food because you've got hot air moving towards cold air. And if there's large holes on the side and it's not airtight, there's plenty of opportunities for all that heat to escape, taking precious moisture content with it. We don't have any of those problems inside of our Kamado Joe. We've got ceramic, which retains heat really well, the radiant heat that it provides, helping you know provide more uniform cooking, and that mesh gasket helps seal in some of that moisture. And so while I was a little bit down about half an hour ago, if you would have joined me then, the more I toss this idea around, I think we might actually be onto something. And it's really only the reverse sear portion that I'm worried about, since I've seen plenty of channels use their grill blazer grill gun for a sear. I think Guga on his channel uses this almost exclusively, and he swears by the sear. Now that's something that I've never tried. I've never used my gun for that. If you've been following me for over the last year, you know that this is how I like to get my coals up and going quickly, and it does a great job since I'm normally clean blue smoke in about 20 minutes, and I'm able to get about 400 degrees. So that's how I use this tool almost exclusively. So today we're gonna throw something I've seen it do before, which is the sear, and something I've never seen it do before, and cook our entire steak inside a Kamado Joe. So let me show you the game plan, bring you nice and close, how we're gonna set up for today's very unconventional reverse sear tomahawk ribeye in the Kamado Joe. So after I was done cleaning out my charcoal basket and the bottom of the grill, this is all that I'm left for charcoal. I've got a little bit of scraps as you heard in the bag, but not just enough to cook this steak. And I'm worried that the fire will go halfway through and I won't have enough to sear. Otherwise I would just, you know, cook it indirectly on here and then sear it with the torch. So the game plan is to slide the torch into our open draft door, get a very, very small sort of just idle fire going, which uh, will measure and see where we land on our dome from a temperature. I'm going to see if I can get it to try and stabilize somewhere around 300 degrees Fahrenheit so that we can do the reverse sear. I'll track the cook with my meter probe and once we get an internal doneness, we'll uh, get ready for inferno mode in a very unconventional array and use the grill torch itself to pull off a sear. Let's get started. So I'm just going to position the torch inside, try and line it up to about center. So that's acting like a heating element would on a normal gas or grill. And just go ahead and start a little fire here. So right after igniting our grill torch, that's what it looks inside. I'm just going to adjust the knob here up top and see if we just can't center that <laughs> long way. Center that flame front and center. Nice, gentle heat. And I just want to see where that lands us. So we've got a fire going inside. It's not hitting any of our firebox, so I'm not worried about it doing any damage down there. I'm just going to take you fast forward while I install our heat deflector plates and our cooking grids. And let's find out 
where about that amount of flame gets us from a temperature. Well, dare I say about 20, 25 minutes later, I think it's working. Our grill is up to about 270 degrees Fahrenheit on the dome. So I think that's the perfect time to start our reverse sear. So I wanna keep everything else as similar as possible on our tomahawk ribeye. So I'm going to add a little bit of a binder using trough hot sauce, just like I always do. And since I salt brined this ahead of time, I'm just going to add some garlic powder as well as some fresh cracked black pepper to try and limit the variables. At least we're not out of those things. I'll bring you nice and close while we season this up, install our meter probe and get ready to throw it on our gas powered Komodo Joe. It's definitely hot. Other than the lack of smell of charcoal and that slight hiss of our torch just running on close to idle uh, firepower, let's throw on our tomahawk. Well, win or fail, the reverse sear portion of today's cook is done. And no matter how it turns out, I will give it that it was very stable. So about the 20 minute mark, I took the opportunity to flip our tomahawk. But looking at the meter chart graph here, this is drawing a really, really flat line. So, you know, no surprise here, we don't have extra coals or smoking wood igniting and maybe causing some of those changes in temperatures. So on what might be low on the redeeming qualities list for today's experiment, at least we have nice stable temperatures. Now let's move on to the part where I suspect the grill blazer torch will shine and that is doing a sear. So we're gonna boldly go where no one will, no Guga and pretty much every other YouTuber's already gone, but new territory for me and use our grill gun for a sear. Now the most, now the most recent steak that I've done last weekend was also a tomahawk steak and I did it caveman style directly on the coals. So I feel like I've got a very close reference for what a charcoal and a live fire sear should do from a taste, texture, and overall experience. So I'm really looking forward to find out if our grill torch provides anything close to the sear that I'm used to. Let's fire it up. All right, here's our tomahawk. I'm just going to remove our meter probe so we don't get it damaged by the flame. Grab our grill gun and get to searing. Here we go. So that looks like a pretty comparable level of doneness to the tomahawk I did caveman style. So I'm not going to take that any further. Let's let it rest since we went right from reverse sear to sear. I'm going to let this sit for about 10 minutes. Well, it is the moment of truth for our Kamado Joe Gasser experiment. I've got some of smoked sea salt, or sorry, this is just the uh, regular fleur de sel, not my smoked sea salt today, and my knife all ready to carve it up. So let me bring it nice and close. We'll slice into it, find out how we did. All right, it is the moment of truth. So time to find out if our Kamado Joe makes a better gasser or if we should stick to charcoal. Looking at it, hard to tell. The sear looks pretty similar to that caveman sear from last week. So I've got some fleur de sel finishing salt here, just if we need to amp up a little bit of that flavor. I've got my knife all set. Let me bring it nice and close. We'll slice it up and get into our taste test. To see if this is something you should ever want to do again or if the sear, maybe we separate that, is something that if you don't have the time to go for inferno mode and you wanna do that really quickly, is worth replicating. Let's slice into it. Well, from an edge to edge doneness perspective, it doesn't really get any better than that. That looks as if it's been sous vide. There's hardly any area of crust to gray to then our medium rare. Looking at it, this looks like a really good steak, but the taste buds will tell, let's keep slicing. Well, I hope my eyes don't deceive me. Let's dig in. I'll just get a little bit of salt on one of our two pieces. First, I'll try one without salt, and then the second one I'll hit with salt, see which we like better, or if it's needed. Let's dig in. First, no salt. Cheers. So I had prepared myself for far worse. That was definitely not bad. It's definitely also not what I'm used to. And what really kind of is surprising there 
Well, it's definitely a lot, no charcoal flavor or wood fired flavor. The seasonings are well more, are far more pronounced than what you sometimes get, especially after a caveman sear, where you're right in the coal, you get that wood natural lump charcoal flavor really amps up. And the hot sauce, I was using truff hot sauce today, and those elements dial way back down almost to indistinguishable. I'm gonna take this extra piece here with the salt to see if that changes anything, rejoin you for our final thoughts. It's good. Hmm. That's crazy. Good, not great. So there's a couple of things picking up. So tenderness is not uh, there, but that's down to the cut. Sometimes you get a piece that's really well marbled, very tender. Maybe this one didn't have as much marbling as last week. It's just a, ever so slightly a little bit, you know, less tender. And I only did the salt dry brine from this morning till now, whereas my normal go-to is overnight. And so I definitely think there's a little bit less uh, tenderness from that 24 hour salt dry brine. The flavor, as I mentioned, really different. Uh, you're not getting any of that charcoal or wood flavor naturally, but the garlic and the truff and the salt and the pepper are much more pronounced than I'm used to. So I'm glad we didn't season this any more aggressively as you're definitely getting more of your seasoning, especially with that finishing salt. There's a lot of salt forward pop and a lot less beefy flavor uh, in terms of the steak itself. And then for the sear, well, this is picturesque. It looks really nice having that edge to edge doneness. Uh, if you were doing Instagram or photos, this is a great way to do it for an amazing picture. Or if you didn't have time for inferno mode sear or you ran out of charcoal, something like I have today, will it do in a pinch? Absolutely. But for me, moving forward, I'm gonna stick to inferno mode as I know and love, and that's using the charcoal, either finishing on the soapstone or the caveman. Those were my top two when I've tested all these different sear methods before. I'm gonna keep using that because for me and my palate, that's what I love. And I'll keep using my grill gun for me as intended, which is for lighting charcoal. When tomorrow it all arrives, I'll get back to. But from a fun experiment, this went much, much better than I could have imagined at the thought of a gas grill uh, coming out of our Kamado Joe or fueling that with gas instead of our lump charcoal. Anyways, I hope you uh, enjoyed today's experiment. Some of you have asked before, you've got some great ideas. Let me know in the comments if there's something else you'd like to see me cook, especially that wood fired idea. If instead of using charcoal, we should use all natural wood instead and cook something inside our Kamado Joe that way. Anyways, until next time, I'm James from Soak and Dad Barbecue signing off. Don't be afraid to fire it up with charcoal.